And now it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup, Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher, by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup, man. We have a great show for you today. Pete Gray's not going to be joining us. He's out cruising around having a great time with Lolly, but boy, do we have a fun one for you today. Captain Brandon Hayward from the Bite Journal and Bite Sport Fishing. We've got so much cool stuff to talk about. There's big fish biting, there's fish biting close to home, and the lobsters are crawling. we got a lot of Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. You stay tuned. It's Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice on the Mighty 1090. The bluefin are abundant this year, but getting them the bite is another story. But if you're willing to chase them, there's an opportunity to land the catch of a lifetime. Now, getting the deal of a lifetime on a new Ford is much less effort because the gigantic summer sales event is going on now at your San Diego County Ford dealer. Choose from a great selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs and save big on interest charges with zero APR long-term financing. On top of that, your Ford dealer will give you an additional bonus for your qualified trade. This special offer is available to anyone who gets approved through Ford Motor Credit. You'll also find great deals on new Ford Super Duty, Motor Trend Magazine's 2017 Truck of the Year. So why chase deals all over town when you can land the deal of a lifetime on the new Ford, car, truck, or SUV you've always wanted during the Ford Summer Sales Event. Stop by any San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. For local and long-range fishing, the Islander out of Fisherman are novice anglers, but Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. You need to check out the Islander on their website, islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to two to five day fishing. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. Let's talk candidly about long-range fishing. This is Captain Frank DePresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long-range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top-notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, huge bait capacity, and top-of-the-line fish-finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long-range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. From the moment you arrive at Fisherman's Landing, the service begins. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shogun have the edge there, too, delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shogun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or shogunsportfishing.com. A few years ago, Shimano introduced the Tranks 500 reel, and it changed the way we cast for big fish. Now, by popular demand, Shimano has created two new sizes, introducing the Tranks 300 and 400, available now at your local Shimano. Mono dealer. Tranks is the dream reel for throwing big baits and catching big fish. X-Ship and HEG technologies combine to provide massive cranking power with a smooth effortless retrieve. Plus, Shimano's new core protect water resistant technology provides long lasting durability in the harshest environment. The new Tranks 300 and 400 are available in two gear ratios and two different handle designs to cover all fresh and salt water applications. See the new Tranks 300 and 400 at your local Shimano dealer. Tranks, it's not just a new reel, it's a way to fish. Check Shimano.com for all the details. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 10.9. We said Pete Gray is out on the East Coast right now enjoying a little time off, but 
man, that was a tough time to decide to go because there are some seriously, seriously good fishing going on right now. Still talking about my buddy Captain Brandon Hayward, a very, very busy dude this time of year. Morning, Brandon. Good morning. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, are you kidding me? We're stoked to have you. This is a, uh, this is a. I would say a transition time for you. It doesn't need to be a transition time for fishermen because the fishing is still so good, but there's a lot of options at play right now. So many. Great. Go troll for 250-pound yellowfin. <laughs> yeah. and big bluefins around if there's weather. We have lobster. So it's that. Uh, it's kind of that classic thing in, in Southern California fishing where the fall is always the best time. Totally. But fishermen's brains are just kind of plumbed around going in the spring and summer a little bit more sometimes so it's like we always say if this was happening in july you wouldn't even be able to get a spot exactly yeah Yeah, you 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 nailed it july and august is in the fisherman's mind that's when it happens but boy year after year after year this is it man this is the best of it and and it's crazy to see all of the things that are available the really really good yellowfin fishing if you happen to find the right kelp in the right school it's it's a little bit feast or famine, but there's definitely more feasting than there is not. Um, and then the the shot at giant ones, and now as of you know as of an hour and six minutes ago, lobsters are back on the table. And right, it's it's on. Right, great yellowtail fishing at all the islands. Right, and yeah. It's really. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day. Like, it's funny how yellowtail are almost a second class citizen now. <laughs> totally. Seven or eight years ago, if guys were getting eighty yellows at SBI or Clemente or whatever. Yeah. People Headline be news. Running. Sure. Running. But uh, it's just kind of standard now. So it's just it's been an incredible ride for the last three seasons, that's for sure. It's been really cool to see this develop and this fishery develop and now the shots at big ones. And it's been kind of crazy working at the tackle shop. A guy will come in like, hey, I'm going on a day and a half trip. What do I need? And, you know, you 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 can't normally for the last 20 years of working at Fisherman's Awning Tackle, you, you could tell a guy you need some two O's and right. you need some 25 pound and send it. And that's right. it. And right. that's all you need. And now it's like, well, you, you could be fishing as light as 20 pound. You could be fishing as heavy as 200 pound. It totally depends if they're going south or going west. And you'd almost be hard. And the other thing that's cool is seeing five day trips right now. Guadalupe, over the last few years has been an amazing fishery and these amazing things. But for whatever reason, the size of the fish this year, it, it's it's literally like looking at hurricane bank fish. I mean, they, I think the Royal Star has 50 over 100, you know, and they're all and they're not just they're not 101. You know, I mean, there's a lot of really big Beautiful. ones right now. Yeah. It's crazy. And a couple of huge yellows that <laughs> yeah. 80 pounder they had on the angler last week or whatever it was. It's it's amazing. Yeah. So really, really fun times. And I know it's a fun time for you, but with, as we said, with transition, this is time. It's lobster season. And you guys have developed such a cool program for lobster fishing over the last few years. And maybe you could share with us a little bit about what you guys are doing and what this time of year does for bite sport fishing. Yeah, sure. Um, I look at it as we have kind of three hard seasons. We do the sea bass, we do the offshore, and then in the fall we do lobster, and we're still kind of doing everything at the same time, too. You know, last November we were catching sea bass and bluefin and lobster. So it's just (laughs) a really cool kind of like confluence. It all comes together. But uh, those lobster trips have become incredibly, incredibly popular, Uh, running our first one uh, tonight out of Newport. And we just make kind of a, a... dare I say, customizable type trip, or our standard trip is we leave at 2 in the afternoon and get back after midnight. Um, But otherwise, we do all sorts of different trips, fishing and lobster combos, or take the people over and they go on the island, stay in a hotel, go on the island, cook your lobster. So it's really fun, and uh, from kind of like an operator's, owner's perspective, it's neat because it keeps everything really fresh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I I love it. The beauty of what you do is it's – you know, it's it's just that group of people that chartered your boat, which is, I'm assuming usually buddies, or it's one person or two people or three, whatever it is. But yep. you're, you know, you're satisfying the needs of what those three people want to do. Where in a traditional charter experience, it's usually a group of people. So the the captain's always making like on a fishing charter. On you know, if you go fishing aboard the Prowler, Buzz is going to make the best decision he thinks possible right. to do as much stuff to please everybody there. But you don't have to worry about that. You get to do what's right for the group you got on board. Yeah. So I always say we just try to play into what their narrative is of what a good trip is. And some people are super happy catching some bonitas and some lobster, and other people want just straight big game. And yeah. So yeah. So we try to do whatever the people want. And with that said, we do a decent amount of uh, open party trips. So, but we try to be real transparent in terms of of what the uh, what the trip's doing it, on that big bluefin, especially. It was really interesting. If if you ran a charter and you caught one, everyone's celebrating and it's victory yeah. and just like let's all drink a beer. Let's you know yeah. I want to take a picture. I want to take a picture and it's just kind of casual. 
on an open party trip when there's three people and one guy gets one, the guy who's up next on the kite's like, let's go. Oh, you know what I mean? sure, yeah, it's, absolutely. Rightfully so. So it's, it's really interesting to see the different dynamics as you have different groups and stuff. So yeah. we do a little, a decent amount of that open party trip because for some guys it's just hard to put a group of three or yeah. we take four for lobster together, up to four. Uh, but, yeah, charter is definitely, the, definitely our bread and butter. That's awesome. Well, and you have a fantastic now fleet of boats, we might as well be calling them, I mean, and, and uh, you seem to have – Really dialed in what's right for you. Yeah, as yeah. far as your boats. And yeah, this is my kind of about you know what. Yeah, my kind of little cold as You know, I started. I had a, I had a boat that definitely was not a, a quote charter boat. I had a 17 foot Arima. I would just take one person at a time. Uh, it kind of wasn't even my like. I don't know. It just kind of found me. You know, mm-hmm. Karen went back to grad school. I had to do something for some side money, and uh, I would just take one person. And that's when there was no offshore fishing. Right. It was just sea bass on the coast and squid related mostly. So then I did that for the year, and then I bought the the first Parker, the 2013, and then uh, fast forward to now or to this summer, I bought a uh, a new one from West Coast, a 2017, obviously, with a 300 on it, 300 horsepower. Nice. And I just love that boat. It's really good on fuel, and that boat wants a 300 on it, to my mind. So uh, I actually sold the 2013 and bought another 2017, and that's actually getting splashed today. <laughs> How so, cool is that? Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, it's nice. Uh, you know, it's an investment, but I want to keep new machinery, sure. and I wanted new electronics, and uh, so it feels good to kind of reinvest in the business. And I've I've swam out so far in doing this that I'm never swimming back in. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you might this, as well keep this, going. Then. This is this is going to definitely be uh, one of my two jobs. You know, until I'm not working anymore. So I figured might as well go all in, get brand new boats, and be ready to go. What a perfect platform that 23 parker pilot house is for the program that you run it's it's, it, perfect. it's literally perfect a lot of people say like why didn't you get a 25 or oh maybe, maybe someday you can get a bigger boat wink wink you know but i did the math and just what works out best for like the business model play and just everything is that 23 because one engine yeah. you know how much it costs to service your engine right totally. and the extra fuel and when you do have to repower so when you want kind of do the math and you think about the extra burn Saving up for a new engine when you have to repower the extra service, it's a lot of money at the end of the year. And that 23 plays just like it's very similar to a 25 to my mind. Yep. Like I, I've had several people who have come down to the boat before, and they say, oh, I used to have a 25. Yeah. Inferring like, oh, this is a 25. I I, had, yeah. Sure. It's a 23. So it's a – I mean, I'm biased because that's the boats that I chose, but – uh I think it's a great boat, and it's a great platform for the, what we do. The Parker Pilot House configuration, or Parker in general, ours our being center console, just offers so much room. There's so much room for They're fishing boats. You know, I mean, that's exactly. what it is. It's not, not that they're not comfortable, because they most certainly are, but it was built with fishing in mind. Lots of room, lots of space, very square, very comfortable. Yep. Good ride, and you have that option of just you know when it's time to run and there's a little bit of wind, you just open the door and you step inside and you're dry. And that's, that's huge. You're not head and toe foul weather gear. And so much of what I do is uh, night fishing, sea bass, lobster. That that bluefin's practically night fishing. Yeah, you're driving home really. in the dark if you're going to do it right, you know. And uh, someone, uh, a bud, said to me kind of like jokingly, like, you know, you're so weird, man. Why do you do every? Why is everything you do at night? It's like, well, I like catching stuff, right? <laughs> and so. Even though sea bass this year is more of a daytime play than it has been the past couple of years, and it seems like every third year it's more of a, a daytime fish, uh, we do so much night fishing. It's just nice for a guy to have a place to lay down, get yeah. out of the weather, all that stuff. That's no, it's, cool. it's it's the perfect boat. That's awesome. And on the flip, you know how it is. You could spend five minutes kind of like rinse and go, turn and burn, and guys get on the boat. They go, wow, the boat's clean. looks good. Yeah. Or you could say, all right, well, Going down for five hours, we're going to detail the thing and really go for it today. So it's a really Spartan boat, and you can put, you know, you can – Put five hours in and clean it, make everything perfect. But with a quick kind of rinse and go, it looks really good too. Yeah, that's it. We uh, we just this for the first time in probably way longer. We should have we utilized uh, having uh, Mark from Monsoon Yacht Service clean our boat up for us. But we did the same thing. I would say that Neil and I do a very good job at keeping our boat clean. Not professionally clean, right, right, but right. it's very easy to keep the boat looking very good with some boat soap and a scrub brush and a fresh water hose. You know, and it looks really good. And then every so often. Just, you know, for in the in our case, three times a year, we'll have, you know, Mark come down and keep a coat of wax on there. And, it, and it's it's just a, yeah, it's a, such a low-maintenance boat. That's, yeah. That's why we bought it. I, I always joke with people, that was like one of the most important things when we decided what boat we were going to buy was we didn't want something that was going to take us two hours to clean up at the end of every trip. Like, exactly. 
it, we need a boat that can be clean from the fives until our boat space with some simple green and a scrub brush and then a rinse off of fresh water and then hit the road. Like, that's, that's it. That's it, for sure. So with that, lobster season is here. You're running your first trip tonight. How yeah. does somebody – you know, take advantage of going with you. I know it's extremely popular, but you've yep. got multiple boats now. Are there opportunities to go? How, how, how does sure, that all sure. run down? There's always kind of a way, and uh, I have a website, bitesportfishing.com. I, I rebranded this year. I was called one, it was one-man charters mm-hmm. from when I had the one person on boat, but it's Bite Sport Fishing now, and then uh, you can always just give me a call. I'll give the, drop the number at the end. Um, and we run those trips out of Davies Locker. It's nice and close to Catalina. It opens yeah. up both ends of the island a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the, the deal on there and yeah, things get booked up, but you know, I know, uh, October 8th is open for charter and we have, you know, there's always a way. So there's dates cool. open still. People are funny, man. They want to like see like lobster seasons open. The people have caught the lobsters. Then they want to book the trip. Same with the bluefin. Yeah. Same with the sea bass, but you got to kind of, uh, it's good to just pick your trips for the year and book early and have your days. Take your chance. And, and I think. I think people will have a lot better success if they just kind of like look, like for the bluefin, for example, look when they've been biting best the last couple of years yeah. and book their trip in that window. It just kind of close their eyes and do it instead of being like, oh, they're wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. The, the best trips are always the ones without the buildup to true. my mind. And the waiting and see almost never pans out, not in terms of success, just in terms of somebody else didn't wait as long as you did, and the date that you really want to go is gone. Exactly. That's how it always so, goes. I mean, it's easy for me to say that sitting here because I'm the guy that collects the money and books the trips, right? <laughs> but if, if I was fishing and I, you know, if, if I had done something else and I know I would have gone on a, a fall trip and a, a early summer five day and done a couple of these, like, small trips or four packs or whatever – I would just plan at the beginning of the year and just kind of take it like that. I t- couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. The thing is, if you go, if you go with a quality operation like yourself or anybody else that really does it right, you're, you're going to have a great trip. And it's a cliche thing to say, but it, it is less about the amount of fish that you catch. But if you book a trip, it, just like you said, in a great time of year with a great operation, the odds of you having a successful trip are so high. And even if it's, you know, th- this one particular week happened to be better than the next, right. you're still going to make a good catch, you know, by by all odds. And you're going to have a great time. And like you say, you're not worried about it. You know right. you got that trip with Brandon secured. You know you want to go with Wes during the big bluefin time of year. And look at, you know, look at all these successful trips on the new moon. Like, I'm just next year. I'm booking my trip. I'm yep. going with Wes. Is gonna big blue thing gonna happen? Hopefully, and if it doesn't, I got a great time of moon and a great time of year, and whatever is biting, he's gonna put me on. Exactly, and that's why the way we do rebookings is if a person comes out the year before, they kind of own that date for the next year. Okay. So if a guy came out today, lobster opener is his first right of refusal. Yeah, that's cool. Or conversely, you know, if they come out the last Saturday in September, we say, okay, you can have the last Saturday in September. Or you can have whatever the calendar day is, September 30th next I year. So you. they have two options. So it keeps it fair, but it also keeps things kind of snug on the booking front because a lot of people, it's just like a long range trip. Yeah. Guys get off this, the guys that walked off the Royal Star today, those dudes are racing in there to give Tracy more money I for next state, year. State room seven. I don't want to lose my yeah, spot. Yeah, totally. So we run it the same way. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, really exciting and so much cool stuff going on with the boat. And there is literally just so much to cover right now with. The tuna fishing going on, the lobstering coming up. We haven't even started talking about the Bite Journal, but so much great information that we want to hear from you. If you want to be a part of Let's Talk Hook Up this morning, join in the fun, join in all the great stuff going on. There are two ways that you can reach us. First is with our local line. That's 858 area code 457 1090. Again, 858 858- Four five seven ten ninety. That's our local number. Or call us toll free. That toll free line is eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. One more time, eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. Not only are we going to be taking your phone calls, not only are you going to get a chance to talk to the man, Captain Brandon Hayward. We are also giving away such a great prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show today, and that's a chance to go fishing on a three quarter day trip aboard the San Diego at a C four sport fishing. Go fishing with Captain Ryan Boston and all the boys there cameron and matt and everybody it's going to be a fantastic opportunity and you want to talk about an unbelievable run of great fishing the san diego is just still trip after trip after trip i mean you think about what a cool value this three-quarter day trip that you're going to win is i mean from yellowtail to yellowfin tuna fishing and still you look day after day after day a three-quarter day trip several hundred you know 150 yellowfin incredible one day after another the run they're on is just amazing and there's such good fishing going on in our local zone you could literally get in on that action by winning that three-quarter day trip on the san diego again 858-457-1090 that's our local number 
or 877-792-1090. When we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls. Lots of great info coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. Don't be the last to get one, especially now. The all-new Brutus Max Torque from Ace Line Hauler. You can catch more lobster and pull deeper with the Ace Line Hauler. It's faster and stronger, so you can get those bugs in the boat. Easy to store and low power draw. The Ace Line Hauler is the highest quality and certainly the best on the market. Just ask a friend who has one. Get the new Brutus Max Torque by Ace Line Hauler today. Buy now at acelinehauler.com or your local tackle shop. For decades, the Kona Kai has been considered San Diego's premier marina, resort, and spa. Now with millions of dollars in upgrades, the Kona Kai Resort is a destination for travelers worldwide who can live it every day. The docks and services are the finest quality in San Diego, and the Kona Kai is the closest marina to the open ocean. As a marina tenant, you enjoy many benefits, including secured free parking, a deluxe health club, swimming pool, and more. Enjoy discounts at their restaurant, bar, and hotel. If you don't have a boat, there are membership available at a very affordable price. The Kona Kai Club has been offering members a home away from home since 1953. Members can spend their days on Kona Kai's private beach, meet new people in the club's modern lounge, share a meal with family at Vessel Restaurant and Bar, or pamper themselves in Spa Terra. Check out ResortKonaKai.com on the web for more information, to reserve a slip, or inquire about joining the club. The Kona Resort, like being on vacation every day in your own backyard. I like grass. I love white water, but I never forget that snow melt in the river can cause cold water shock. I wear a life jacket always. Anyone with me has got to do the same. Save the ones you love. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. Take a ride and be amazed. That's exactly what you had the chance to do when the Sea Keeper demo boat made its Southern California tour. You had your chance to experience just how smooth the ride can be. By eliminating boat roll, Sea Keeper transforms everyone's experience on the water. You go from sick to smiling, and memories turn from never again to best trip ever. The Sea Keeper boat is now up the coast at the Southern California Boat Show at the Cabrillo Way Marina in San Pedro this weekend. This is your chance to check. Check out the Sea Keeper 3, optimized to eliminate up to 95% of boat roll on boats between 30 and 39 feet. Even better, you'll see this gyro is so small it can fit inside a customized leaning post. To check out the Sea Keeper demo boat, come out to the Southern California Boat Show at the Cabrillo Way Marina in San Pedro, the heart of Los Angeles Harbor. Go to the Sea Keeper website, seakeeper.com, and check out the Sea Keeper. Seakeeper.com. Take a ride. Be amazed. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Again, if you want to get in the fun, 858-457-1090. That's our local number. Or toll free, 877-792-1090. We talk so much about the parkers and the fishing and, and lobster and that we haven't even scratched the surface of the Bite Journal I say it all the time. I'm certainly not saying it just for blowing smoke reasons. It is my most favorite fishing print thing that's out there, period, and uh, and I love it. You do such an awesome job with it, man. It's well, great. Thanks. Thanks. We try. I mean, my goal is to have the best saltwater fishing magazine in the world, you know? You do. You know, so. No question about it. So what's uh, what's what's going on in the world of the bite? Bite's getting designed right now, Ooh. and uh, it'll probably ship off three weeks if we're lucky or something like that. So, you know, our cadence is, quote, only two a year. So a lot of people think it's a quarterly, but it's not. So there's two issues. And I kind of tweaked on the uh, production schedule and the release dates. The way we had it, there was like a 
Fred Hall issue and then a holiday issue. Okay. And so I kind of pushed everything forward. So the the fall winter issue well that will last us um, until after Fred Hall. Okay. And then we'll drop an issue in the middle of summer. I just wanted an issue getting put out there kind of when fishing's at its peak and there's most people at the counter totally. and all that interest. So instead of being in like dare I say shoulder seasons on release dates, we kind of pushed it forward. So if you get your magazine a little bit later, that's that's, that's the reason why. why. The thing that you've done that's so much different about the bite is is it's it's just that it gives you the ability to not be in a rush to to get something kicked out by this date or that date, right. and it shows. I mean, it shows in the articles and the way that it's put together. And I mean, I, I you know I, I'm like most fishermen. I read every fishing thing that's out there, all the magazines, sure. Western Outdoor News. You know, I mean a, a, everything. But that's the the one thing that like it's it, it really is. It's a cover to cover thing. Like everything is cool. The advertising. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. the ads in there are cool. Like That's everything about for. it's awesome. Yeah. Well, we want it to be evergreen and something evergreen and something that you know lives on wherever you have it. So I don't think anyone's ever thrown one away. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. that's the goal. That's cool. That's the goal. So no, I I love uh, I love doing that, and it's a it's a nice mix that I get to do them both. I know you can't, and so you don't have to, and you don't even need to be specific if you do choose to. But is there one thing that you can give us as a tease that you're excited about coming out? I don't want to say. All right. That's fair. That's fair. I'm going to ask you during the break, though. If you that's don't tell fine. me, like, you're not even welcome on for the second hour. That's fine. I'm just throwing that out there right that's, now. Okay. <laughs> no. Good. Well, we're excited. Well, hey, again, if you want to get through, it's going to be a very busy morning. So much cool stuff to talk to Brandon about, both in the fishing and the journal and all the great stuff. It's going to be a great time. We're going to take your phone calls again, 858. 858- Four five seven ten ninety or eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. Let's start with Brett, who's calling us from San Marcos this morning. Good morning, Brett. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. Hey, good morning, Brandon. Good morning. How are you today? Hey, good. Uh, just wanted to check in. So I have the four bites sitting on my coffee table right now. Nice. And um, and Rick, I think you'd agree that without looking at the byline, you can tell a Brandon article about an about a paragraph or two into it because yeah. of the the descriptions and just the style. No, that's because there's so, like two backward sentences and <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, Brad, I'm just skipping yeah. forward to find the Hewlett thing. Like that's yeah, that's me. That's that's, that's me that's, too. That's my first one. Well and you know I was on a trip where we went out to Catalina and the photographer was out taking pictures oh, for one right. of the journals. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And um and the 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 professionalism and and quality of the photography as anyone can see is just outstanding so needless to say i'm a biased big fan of brandon i think the other point i wanted to make was i've been on all the trips with brandon um and was actually on the very first trip uh with his first boat that's right or the older parker that's right and uh looking forward to the new one particularly with the uh the autopilot and the 3d hd peruno system but um, but i think the coolest thing has got to be when you get on the boat Brandon just says, "Hey, the boat is yours," that's, and yeah, and and it just puts you at ease. Like, well, hey, that's that's true. This the boat's ours. And I think some of the coolest stuff is uh, is Catalina and and getting some lobster and then going into the lobster shack and for fifteen bucks making a full on lobster meal. You just can't beat it. No, it's the best. No, thank, thanks for the words. I appreciate it. You know, like when guys come on the boat, I say there, there's no rules. Just don't pull on the door too hard. <laughs> this is your boat for the next. This is your boat for the next twelve hours, That's and right. you know I'm just driving it. And then some people say, "Okay, cool." And then some people say, "You're not just driving it; you're doing." You know, but what I mean is, I try to offer an experience to people where, like Brett said, they're at ease. They come on, they feel like it's their boat. So you know, put your things wherever you want and whatever works best for you, and uh, just make yourself at home. The thing I like so much about that is it could be three three buddies that are the hardest of hardcore and. And you will provide them the hardest core fishing experience they want. Up all night, fish every bait, rod in hand, the whole nine. It, yeah. Or, uh, you know, a, a, a guy and his wife can come and, and fish as mellow as they want. And maybe it's a lobster thing like Brett. And they don't want to grind it out all night. They're stoked catching this many and going into the lobster and having a good time. Or the fishing totally. is the same. Like, I, well, I love that. Brett wants to grind it out. He wants to get his, his double limits. We just got to get the dinner in there, too. Yeah. You know? So we do, right. we do it right. Well, you know, it's uh, it's just so one fun. Quick thing. Year, year before last, um, I had my, my son on the boat with his friend who, who you know, wasn't that experienced. And we got into a wide-open yellowfin bite off Camp Pendleton. And, and, wa- and watching Brandon – I got it on video. And watching Brandon just ease everybody into – three triple hookups and basically get all those fish on board and then cruise into the beach, set up, 
and get a 30 pound yellowtail. Um, the kid, <laughs> the kid was just, oh, he was just over the top. He just said, when can we go with Brandon again? Yeah, that's neat. That's that was rad. a fun trip. Yeah. No, thanks for that. Yeah. No, uh, Brett's just the perfect customer. You know what I mean? And, uh, one thing too is, you know, fishing isn't cheap no matter what you do. That's for sure. And for that big bluefin, I mean, I'm, I'll say straight up, you're burning 130 gallons of fuel, 120. So we're charging, you know, $520 a person to go do that. And a lot of people go, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. But do the it, do the math sometime on, like, if you're going to buy your own boat, have your own boat payment, or buy your own boat for 18000 keep it in storage, and what it costs you at the end of the year. Oh, man. And then look at what it costs to go fishing on a – whatever type of fishing you're going to do, mm-hmm. you know, three-quarter day or come out with me. But if you want to go small boat fishing and you're going to go with me or go with, with one of the other guys – do the math, and I think you'll be really surprised, like, spending, you know, going four times and spending that 520 per person, or, you know, we charge uh, 295 per person times lobster, take four people. You'd be surprised, man. You come out ahead. I know multiple people who have, you subscribe exactly to that program, yep. private, private boat owners that just said, you know, I had it, and trying to find guys that wanted to go. And then when we got out there, I mean, sure, I, I know how to fish, but, I mean, you know, not the same as a guy that's there every single day and is well connected. information game is huge. It, it's everything. Yeah. And, uh, and like I said, you know, be, between slip payment or storage and fuel and time and effort and everything else, there is no question. You know, they, they book with you once a month or yep. twice a month, yep. twice a month during that, that hardcore time, and, and there you go. You and, and coming from a guy well, who either yeah, spends – Rick. Go ahead, Brad. You and you, you and know, you know I had the that beautiful 26 foot scout with twin 150 Yamahas and fully set. Loved but it. But I can tell you, I'm the perfect um, example of that story, and I've done the math about 30 or 40 times, uh, you know, since I sold the boat. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> That's cool, Brett. Well, I'm glad. It sounds like you got it figured out, and I'm sure you got a lobster. Uh, I'm sure you got a lobster trip on the way. Three weeks. All right, Thanks buddy. Lot, guys. All right, thank you. All right, thank- Great job. Appreciate the phone call very much. Explain a, a teeny bit about that. You've touched on it twice now, and Brett said what a great deal it is. How on earth do you pull that off? How do you pull off a lobster dinner while you're fishing for lobsters? Because I think that sounds so rad. It's pretty good. It's up my alley. Well, when it, when it's really good, you get your limits, and then you go in and do it because they don't close the kitchen till 10. Okay. And uh, lobster traps kind of like where the locals eat and drink. So yeah. sometimes that kitchen's open until 11. Okay. They never close before 10. <laughs> so, you know. When it's slam dunk lobstering, you can kind of get it done and get in there and, and still, you know, be within your 10 or 12 hours for the trip. Otherwise, what I'll do is, like, Brett will get a hotel sometimes. Okay. So we'll, we'll lobster, catch our lobsters going for dinner, then fish the next day. Or if you really want to go for it and, you know, yeah, do the double limit thing out. and stay on the boat or whatever, then uh, then you kind of get what you're going to get and eat lobster and then go grind it out for the rest of the night. Do those trips originate on the coast at at, in Newport, do they yeah. originate at the island? Like, how does that part work? No, they they originate out of Newport. Okay, okay. They originate out of there. And uh, so, you know, you kind of, you don't have to take the express back and forth. Yeah, I've that's definitely, awesome. I've definitely done that before, but it's just an extra moving part sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So, But yeah. you go out, you set your gear, you catch, hopefully, you know, in a perfect world, you catch a limited lobster, then you drive into the beach, put the boat on a mooring, everybody gets, you know, jumps in and uh, exactly. goes up into town, has dinner and cocktails, and then gets back on the boat and catch your, you know, Catch her more or be done or whatever, however it goes from there. Yeah. That's right. No, it's a, it's a really neat trip. That's really cool. And, again, there are opportunities to do that. You said not it's not wide open, but yeah, the, it's not wide open. But if a guy really wants to do that and calls you today after the show, there's going to be a spot for him to go do it. Yeah, I, I lost a guy on a, a two-day trip that James and Wes are running. Uh, I think it's Friday or it's the 4th. So there's a spot open there. The boat's open for charter on the 8th. And there's an open party on, like, the 28th or something. I, I have my book with me. That's exciting. But, yeah, cool. there's there's always a way. And the thing with lobster, it's just like right now everyone's excited because it's just starting. Sure. Just like the bluefin, just like in March when some sea bass start biting or whatever. Lobster season six months. Yeah. Right? And it's still really good at the end sometimes. I just – you just have to kind of change your program sometimes. And people say a lot, like, oh, man, you, you hoop deep. Like, well, I hoop deep when they're deep. But sure. sometimes you're hooping in 12 feet of water or whatever. So You hoop for the lobster. Right? Exactly. So in the spring, it can be kind of like some different depths and stuff like that. The f- neatest, one of the highlights for me this season was that Catalina kind of returned to its like traditional definitions of when we were kids. Sea bass started biting their second week of March. That's right. And we're getting two to five sea bass and then going and doing our lobster. It was <laughs> that's really neat. That's so cool. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. 
uh, yeah. next year. Hopefully it repeats. And I think it's kind of in that cycle or it's, it's, that's going to happen again. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Hey, the phones are packed. We want to jump back into them again. If you want to get your spot, 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. Let's talk to Hills. Call us from Ventura this morning. Hi, Hills. Welcome to the show. Hey, you guys. How you doing? Doing hey, great. Hills. Hills, good morning. Hey, um, so a couple questions for Brandon is, uh, do you, uh, get a lot of the bite magazines, uh, sort of like swiped by the postman before they ever make it to the I, thing? Cause there's, I, I think that happens sometimes. Anytime you're dealing with the post, there could kind of be issues, you know what I mean? But, uh, it's, I think he just means because it's such a cool there, yeah, no, no, there's cool definitely, piece that the guy's going to swipe it. There's some gremlins out there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's so good. But hey, and, uh. How many black sea bass do you uh, find yourself just incidentally hooking when you're fishing sea bass? Because it does seem like the black sea bass are really coming back. I think it's easier to catch a black sea bass than a white sea bass. No doubt. If you said. I'm with you on that. There's spots on the beach where, like, I I always say I should reach out to those tagging guys. That There's that, uh, they're doing some research. I'm not describing it well, but out of Cal State Northridge. Uh, they're really easy to catch. You There's a lot spots. of them. Yeah. They're, they're, I don't want to say you have to drive away from them, but they're definitely oh, no there's no shortage of them. And sometimes, I mean, oh, perfect example, last fall there was a day we caught like 13 of them. And you're in shallow water, they release just fine. So, yeah, you, you hook a lot of those things. And when they're all balled up and spawning in June or or sometimes they spawn in the fall too. So, no, there's there's... It seems like there's a lot of them, and to my mind, I saw the kind of uh, numbers that we're putting out there in terms of where they think the population is, and I think, like, those numbers are definitely skewed and off a little bit. Like, there's a lot of those things, especially along Camp Pendleton, where I fish a lot. They're not hard to find, and, and like, you, 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 you nailed it. There are times, especially that squid nest. It seems uh. like squid nest fishing when the wave of sea bass was kind of maybe over or moved or the there's it's old bait and not new bait and like loves the old bait bat yeah. ray black sea bass party would get started that's when you knew like all right well it's time to find greener pastures yep. or wait for this thing to reload because there would be times when like you say it's it's wide open like and we might as well pull the anchor like if we stay here all day maybe we'll pluck one dumb one that's still floating around there otherwise yep. we're going to be pulling on black sea bass all day long and those things move a lot like we think about them like oh they live in the kelp and they're always there but they come and go a lot and they spend a lot of time out in the mud looking for that squid i think i think one thing that's cool about those things too is the, the they're not the ones you catch aren't all 500 pounds, and they're not right. all, you know, 12 inches long either. I mean, if you spend a day fishing the coast, fishing the bottom, you will you will catch those things at, at all sizes. I mean, Absolutely. There's, there's, and, I, and I know nothing. I know nothing about the health or the population or anything, but it sure seems like it's not in the most dire straits in the world. There's a huge mix. And then you'll get those, like, straight 300-pounders, like just huge <laughs> ones sometimes. Which, as a pain in the butt as they sometimes can be when you're trying to catch something else, you still have to take a step back and look at it. Like, I, I literally, I just caught a 250-pound fish on 30-pound tackle on my own boat. Right. And I can see a guy, you know, I can see a guy taking off on a wave right now. Right, it's pretty exactly. pretty cool. It is. It is. Some people come out, and they're like, ah, black. And then there's other guys that's the coolest thing ever for them. No doubt. I mean, there's entire charter businesses in Florida that that's what they do, yeah. those Goliath Grouper Jewfish trips. Totally. Right? Totally. So... No, it's, a, it's, our, it's our, it's our, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, it's a big, beautiful local game fish. I think they're, I think they're cool, but annoying at times. Yeah, very yeah. well said. Hills, yeah. great, great contribution. Appreciate it very much. Hey, it's time to find out what's going on down south. It's time for the catch part with the cast man, Richard Castaneda from Castors, which today is sponsored by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Fisherman's Processing is San Diego's finest, and that's why they're known as the fish pros. And once you try them, you'll be hooked. They'll fillet and vacuum pack your fish to your specs, as well as offer the very best in smoked fish, jerky, and their famous tuna burger. Check Fisherman'sProcessing.com for more details, or you can see them when your trip returned to the San Diego landings. Let's talk to the cast man, Richard Castaneda from Castors. Buenos dias, cast man. Hey, buenos dias, Ricky. Is uh, Pedro around? Pedro is driving the coast of Maine right now, just enjoying some sights and a very fun non-fishing trip, little getaway, and enjoying some probably fall colors. But he, he's listening on the web, said to say hi to everybody. Just shot a text from him during the last break. So all good, Cast Man. Oh, good for him. He's up there for the fall colors. Yeah. Great, great, time, great time to be up there. Totally. But, uh, anyway, well, the fishing uh, down in Baja did slow down this past weekend, uh, especially down the southern tip there from East Cape all the way down to uh, – San Jose del Cabo and, and Cabo San Lucas. 
still a few striped marlin around, a few blues, occasional black. Uh, the tuna bite there in that area there around the Iman Bank uh, uh, did slow down a bit, uh, but they are getting some tuna up to 100 pounds there. Um, and, uh, of course, plenty of small ones and, of course, occasional wahoo, some dorado. Um, and, and the season is changing there now. They're getting into the fall. Reports there from Eric Brixton of Gordo Banks Pongas. He says you can feel it in the air. This temperature is starting to drop. Uh, with that, that's a good news because once that temperature starts to drop, those tropical storms dissipate and basically fade away. So uh, as far as anybody going down this week down that way, there's no, no storms on the horizon, which is good. Um, over in Masatlan there, uh, not a lot of anglers there at this time of year, but they will should be starting to come in there this coming October. That's when they kick off their sailfish season. Uh, they'll, they'll be getting a few Dorado, a few sails, an occasional striper. Uh, Zihuantanejo, same thing there. They're starting into their winter mode now, which is they really fish strong during the winter, uh, starting um, uh, November, and they'll fish strong all the way through uh, May and into June. And um, they're reporting uh, some sales along with occasional blue marlin uh, and inshore, you know, basically quite a few quite a few roosters right now. But the rivers are still flowing uh, from the, uh, you know, past rains. So the uh, reservoirs are full, lakes are full. And so there's a lot of silt coming out. So there's some dirty water. You've got to work around that dirty water along those beaches and find those roosters. But the roosters are in there. So some really good rooster and, uh, and of course, the Jack Ravel. Uh, anyway, that's the report for this week, um, Ricky, and uh, we'll talk to you next Saturday. And anybody wants to take uh, one of our fabulous trips into southern Baja, mainland Mexico, Central America, give us a call at Cast Tours at 800-593-6510, and I'll talk to you next Saturday, Rick. So much cool stuff going on, and Brandon and I were just saying during the last break that this is the time. This is the time for the Baja. This is the time for spots like that going south. You get that. You know, the storms have, you know, are, are subsiding and you get into that area where you don't need to worry about storms so much. But the fantastic weather, the fishing remains so good. This is prime, prime time for the Southern Baja, Cast Man. You got it, Rick. Anyway, I'll talk to you next Saturday. Appreciate a great report, buddy. We'll talk to you then. Thanks, Cass. All right. All right. Again, that report brought sponsored. Hey, man, lobster season is here. Lobster season is literally open right now. Make sure that you gear up with the best performing lobster gear on the market, and that's Promar. Based in SoCal, Promar products are designed by fishermen for fishermen, and they offer everything you need for a successful evening of lobster hooping, including the brand new Ambush XL. It's a 36-inch rigid hoop net. It's the largest allowed by law. Visit Promar on Facebook or visit them at promarnets.com. And what more can you say about those guys, too? They, they do it right. They make the right, right gear for lobstering. It's incredible how much just that whole... Uh fisheries grown you know from gear and, and everything else so absolutely yeah exciting stuff hey when we come back we got a lot more let's talk hookup to come in here including more of your phone calls you stay tuned and you're listening to let's talk hookup on the mighty 1090 the long fin in orange southern california's premier fishing superstore is having their sixth annual parking lot show and customer appreciation day saturday october 14th this is truly a big event with unbelievable sale prices from all participating manufacturers meet rep from Shimano, Power Pro, Seeker, Phoenix, Daiwa, Avet, Aftco, Accurate, Berkeley, Mustad, Okuma, MC Swimbaits, Calstar, Seagar, and more. Over 20 manufacturers will be there. Take advantage of tremendous savings on fresh and saltwater tackle. Free real service with minimum purchase. Plus, you can win big as the long fin shows their appreciation with a huge raffle with hundreds of free giveaways. You will certainly find what you want at unbelievable prices for this one-day only sale. It's all happening Saturday, October 14th from 7 to 7 at the Long Bin, 2730 East Chapman, just off the 55 Freeway in Orange. For directions or more information, check out the website at thelongfin.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. 
This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next-generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium BMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x rap Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x rap Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x rap Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire line at Rapala.com. It's time for our Power Pro 30 second seminar and I tell you what, with Power Pro, what I like about it is the knot string. You tie a knot with Power Pro, whether it be a John Collins knot, an Albright knot, uh, back to back uni, they hold and work with Power Pro. Yeah, the line is just not stiff. It's the perfect amount of round. It has good abrasion resistance, and it's just easier for connections than other types of line out there. Indeed, Power Pro at your favorite tackle store or check out PowerPro.com. San Diego Sports Leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Hey, I want to remind you about a very cool event coming up here with the San Diego Marlin Club. It's the 35th annual Small Boat Tournament. It's San Diego's largest or San Diego's oldest fishing club. How cool is that, the Marlin Club? Uh, it's got marlin and tuna categories. It's October 7th and the 8th of 2017. The awards presentation will be on Sunday. Uh, it's completely open to the public. They have a giant raffle. Small boat tournament is kind of one of the, the coolest tournaments that those guys um, have put on in a long time. It's for boats 26 feet and under, if I remember correctly. It doesn't, uh, doesn't list on the flyer, but I'm, I'm pretty certain it's 26 feet and under. Um, they have a giant raffle. Again, you can enter online at themarlinclub.com, or you can give them a call, 619 222 Eight six seven seven. They got more information on their Facebook page, and if uh, you want to bring guests and stuff, they have a great dinner afterwards. Only ten bucks if you want to bring extra people along with you, um, you know, wife and kids if, if they're not fishing with you already. So a really really cool event. Again, October seventh and eighth at the San Diego Marlin Club, the thirty fifth annual Small Boat Marlin Tournament. It's going to be a really really fun time, and uh, with the great tuna fishing going on, what a what a great opportunity to get in and do some do some fun fishing at the Marlin Club. Hey, phone lines are packed up again. If you want to get through. Have your shot at a three-quarter day trip and your chance to talk to Captain Brandon Hayward, 858-457-1090. That's the local number. Or you can reach us toll-free. That toll-free line is 877-792-1090. One more time, 877-792-1090. Let's jump back into the phones and talk to Ken, calling us from El Cajon. Good morning, Ken. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Morning, gentlemen. Happy fishing to you guys. Um, I was curious. A lot of people want to go out lobster fish with me. If they have a one-day license and a lobster card, are they legal? Yeah. Yeah, they are for that day. If it becomes midnight and you're still fishing, they're not. But, uh, ah, okay. Yeah. And I heard you have to have your fishing license number on your buoys now. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, your fishing license number. It's actually not. It's your Go ID number. So the, the number that you are to the fishing game, it's uh, on the top left corner uh, of your license. If you own a, a CPFV or a, a passenger vessel like what i do uh your fishing game numbers have to be on the buoy or the go id but we put the we put our fishing game numbers on there that way no matter who's running the boat it's all sure all good yeah all right because a lot of guys want to go with me and i said well i think you have to have a regular fishing license but i'll make them happy yeah Thank it, you guys it, 
Yeah. And, and inexpensive. I mean, a one day license is only fifteen bucks. Obviously, you can get a two day license. I think is twenty seven and some change. But you can easily do that. And l- the cool thing is too, if they they got to buy their lobster card, which again, it's only ten dollars, like nine nine dollars and change. But the lobster card is good through the season. Is, is that right, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah. Till uh, March. 22nd or 3rd or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So if yep. they go out with you, they decide they only want to, you know, try it for one time, they're going to be spending, you know, maybe 20 bucks at the worst case scenario, 30 bucks in licenses to try it with you can. And then their lobster card's good for the season. So if they decide they want to keep rolling, they can, you know, they can buy the license for the rest of the year or come the first of the year if they decide, well, I, I really liked fishing lobsters when I went with, with Ken that one time. I'm just going to buy a yearly license. The lobster card's still good through uh, the end of March or the end of the lobster season, anyways. And where do you get a map that shows the closed areas? Uh, you know, Department of Fish and Wildlife has a pretty nice booklet that they put out. I'm sure it's available online on their website, but they put a pretty nice booklet. And most places that issue licenses should have them. Uh, you know, I mean, I know if you ever happen to come down to Fisherman's Landing, we've got a bunch of them down there. But I would, I would suspect most places that sell fishing licenses can get them from the Department. Department of Fish and Wildlife. They're totally free. It's like a colored booklet. has all the lats and longs and, you know, has like, you know, Google Earth type shot of the shoreline to make it somewhat easy to figure out where the closures are. But. So that's how I was coming back in. I saw all kinds of boats out, off the Point Loma. I was like, I thought that was a closed area for fishing. I was like, oh, well. I just kept on going. I was like, hmm. There, there is very little off of Point Loma that is closed. There is a teeny stretch, and actually the only stretch that it does affect is for lobster. There's a there's a spot right off. There's a small closure right off of the point that, uh, that that has some closure. Other than that, as far as fishing goes, there's there's virtually no areas off of Point Loma that are restricted. But again, just uh, I would hop on the Department of Fish and Wildlife website. Um, I know those uh, Baja Directions charts have a nice chart that shows um, you know what what's closed and what's not. Or just pick up one of the booklets from any place that sells fishing licenses. All right, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Ken, have yeah, yeah, pre- appreciate the phone call very much. Bye. Next up, let's talk to Rudy, calling us from Carlsbad this morning. Good morning, Rudy. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. How's the wife and kids? How's the wife and kids? Everyone's good. Tired, but good. They're, they're, yeah, they're, good. They're, they're hey, I, I have a couple of questions. What do you uh, recommend when you're uh, – I've caught white sea bass in the surf, and I caught one that was so big I had to let her go because she was full of eggs. She was as long as I am tall, and I I didn't know they came in that close. And uh, I've caught another one in another location in my neighborhood. Where? Tell and, me where. Yeah, and I need the numbers. She, she was about 20, uh, 20 pounds. Beautiful. Great fish. That's awesome. Well, certainly some good fishing, Rudy. Appreciate the phone call very much. Thanks a lot for that. With with that white sea bass fishing going on, if there was a particular time of year that you could put on as a favorite, does yep. that exist for you? I mean, do you and, and and way you could catch them? You know, yeah, it seems that's, like that's a good question. Yeah, when you got started, there was all this crazy big beach fishing. You right. Started with the charters, not yep. not you getting started. I'm yeah. sure it was more island. So maybe kind of run us down the whole sea bass game. Yeah. Um, well, I like fishing for them because they're like one of the harder fish to catch. So for me, like my, I get the most like satisfaction out of catching one uh, in the fall, like okay. that late fall fish when it kind of circles back down the coast or whatever, just because it's probably the hardest way to catch them. On the charter front, and when it's the best kind of charter fishing, people used to call me, um, I don't know, the first few years I had the business and say like, hey, I want to book a sea bass trip in March or April, because that is our definition of when sea bass fishing is the best. Fred Hall. Fred Hall, March, Always. April, yeah. sea bass. I wouldn't even take people because <laughs> that didn't happen for a really long yeah, time. No doubt. And even that coastal fish didn't show up until like May, late May, if there was squid. And it, think about it. Those really good sea bass years, it was like July and August. No remember? Doubt. Like fireworks were going the off best, when you were catching them. Yeah. I, I, I always joke that the very best week of sea bass fishing was the week that we were in Sitka for our Kingfisher trip. I mean, you could mark it on a calendar, and it was the end of June. Okay, you know, late June, yeah. You, you could just, you knew, like, oh, Rick's going out of town for six weeks. The first, the fir- and, and not maybe not, that, that wasn't necessarily the best week of it. Yep. That was the first week, always a very good fishing that was always in my backyard. Some yep. kind of La Jolla, Point Loma. I remember. Imperial, some, somewhere in that stretch, there's always going to be an epic one that week, always. Yep, I remember. So the best time for on the charter front, so that brings me to now I take trips in March and April because Catalina has been was good That's last it. year in the last couple of years, and April has been a better a, a better sea bass month the last few years. So, uh, you know, from that first moon in April until I, – I fish sea bass, like, hard 
from the new moon in April until three days after the full moon in July. Okay. And for whatever reason, that bluefin loves to start biting after the full moon <laughs> totally, in July. Totally. Like the first trip we went on, it was it got so lucky. So on the charter front, that's it. it, it just like you're saying, it's it's hard to argue with that June. And yeah. people love that that last because they you can theoretically keep three. Yeah. So the end of June and this year, that end of June, uh, beginning of July was excellent for me. Uh, I fished like it was long runs and it was the coast and fishing up above. Um, that's where we got that uh, 77 pounder or 78 pounder or whatever it was. So the business caught four fish over 70 pounds this year. I was just going to ask you to speak on that. This You guys had the most incredible round. Big fish. Uh, giant. Yeah. I mean, big fish doesn't do justice. That We might have caught 30 over 60. I, I remember on. we had like 22 and I, and then that other that end of season thing got going. So probably high 20s. Yeah, no, it's incredible. And the cool thing is, is there's a big spread of fish. Like I'm a... Uh, one of my favorite guys to fish with, Jeff Chung and Fumio, they came out, and uh, you know, usually it's a 12-hour trip. I was like, well, let's we can stay longer, but I want to be, I want to catch one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they they both they both caught two. Rod Benz are like, oh, you grab it. I, I get it. It's like a 14-pounder. Okay, perfect. So my point, yeah, bounced it. Yeah. So my <laughs> my point is that there's a pretty neat spread of fish too, yeah. and I saw I've been every year I see more and more of that like smaller. Fish, That's you know, exciting. That's smaller could be 32 pounds, 28 pounds, 38 pounds. So, and that that big fit, those those big ones to my mind are the ones that we were kind of having our way with in like 2010. You know, that's what they've kind of grown into. Maybe I could be wrong. Um, it was not long ago that a 30 pounder was a huge deal. Like Western Outdoor News cover shot. Right. This is a big deal. The certainly the jackpot fish and the fish that's in the you right. know that's alert the media. Yep. And that fish now is like. Wow, where did that one come from? I know. Like, I tell people a lot of, like, a, a guy gets a 42-pounder, a 45-pounder. I tell them, like, hey, any sea bass in my book is a victory. Don't kid. Yeah. And so when guys get those ones, they're like, oh, I really wanted my 50 or whatever it is. They go, guys, uh, I don't know, nine years ago, 10 years, we'll fill in the blank. Oh, man. The, a 40-pounder was a 60. I yeah. remember specific, I caught my first 40-pounder on the Dreamer at Freddy's, uphill current, uh, and, like, I almost started crying. Like, I was just so appreciative. Like, I shook Alan's hand a bunch, and I was just like, to my mind, I was like, I got my 40-pounder. It was yeah. a huge deal. Huge deal. And then things kind of changed. One of my most memorable fish for my career, for sure, was a 38-pound sea bass, also with Watson at the East End Light, and, you know, and that on a, on a, on a jig, you know, yeah. and, like, that was the... That was like a, a highlight, still is, you know, like a sure. highlight career fish. Like that was one of the coolest things. A big sea bass was a thing that you just didn't get to do. Yep. And, uh, and, and you know, a 38-pounder, a very nice one. But I don't know when the last time we caught one that was smaller than that on our boat in, right. in, in a while. You know, we right. don't catch huge numbers of them, but the ones that we catch are on the beach, and they're, they're, they're big, big ones. That's just what they – that's what this fishing has kind of morphed into. Yeah. No, it's, it's really interesting, and I love it that I can – Especially out of Davies, you know, it opens up that West End a lot. Those, you know, West End, West Cove kind of afternoons and stuff, fishing out of there. And it opens up fishing the beach in the morning and running over to the island That's afterwards. Cool. So The other thing that I, I think I that I thought was so cool watching your sea bass professionalism progress was, and I, I include myself in this, is the, rel, the reliancy on, on bait, in particular on squid. You know what I mean? Right. Squid fishing makes sea bass the mass fishing for sea bass very easy and then Absolutely. you know there's a there's a much you know a, a much more difficult and really cool way of guys catching them that's importing bait you know knowing to catch bait somewhere and taking that squid yep. to another location but then watching you in particular having such good fishing on just their natural feed on mackerel and kelp lines was right. that's what i was the most impressed with you know well think i caught nothing the first year i tried that's what, that's that's the truth though. Like the first year I bought a boat and I was like, I really want to, you know, do this on my own and everything. Yeah. I caught nothing doing that. Uh, but then the next year it started to click and a little bit more and a little bit more. And now I feel very, very comfortable. And the brass tacks of sea bass is you just have to have current. You need some flow and there's some spots you can get bit and slack, but there's nothing. It's crazy that you can get bit one afternoon, go back there the next day. There's no current and just be like, hey, it's not going to work yeah. out. And I love, just like you're saying, favorite style and everything, I like that, that fin bait style of catching totally, them, for sure. Totally, totally. For sure. You can rely on the bait, catching the bait a little a little better, but it's just yep. there's something cool about catching them on something that they'd be eating anyways. Yeah, and, and kind of moving with them. You know, when you fish bluefin, 
you're not going to just run over the same icon and just like endlessly get bit. I mean, theoretically maybe, but not really. You know, you're going to walk with it and move. And I mean, I've done the same thing with Seabass. You know what I mean? I've been I in my heart of hearts, I know that there's schools that I've got on north of Del Mar, and then at the end of the year, been like in L.A. County or the one year I was up in Santa Barbara. <laughs> I just think they're the same ones. That's cool. I really do. That's really cool. So, and they're really a creature of habit, and uh, yeah, they're just they're just uh, they're neat. I like fishing for them. They're definitely one tick more difficult of a fish to catch than most of what else is out there. So, every one yep. that hits the deck has got a certain bit of yeah, you yeah, know, got got them, you know, yep. and that they're they're cool and they they're cool looking and they're the best thing in the world on the grill. Like everything about Delicious. them is a cool yeah. fish. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. I'm I'm already looking forward to next season. I'm really I hopefully hopefully we get another. Uh, November shot because we had a little little sample of that last year and they were big. And there again just plays into what you decided to do with your business. It's not a fish that's easily ta- tackled on your own boat. It's there are hundreds of them that get caught going on a sport boat, but it's just difficult. It's difficult to target them and target a big one. If you and that's to, what you do, right? You target trophies and you're I mean, really to, good at getting them. No, thanks. I mean, not to interrupt, but like. People have very skewed perspectives on sea bass fishing, or they like don't like them for whatever reason, or like it's crowded and the bobs, and mm-hmm. that's because if you hear about it, if you hear like there's the fish in the bait grounds on the east end, I want nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? And sometimes you could just have to sit on your purse and kind of take it and do it because that's the only game in town. But that's not sea bass fishing to my mind. Totally. You know what I mean? So there's you can always fish by yourself and kind of especially with that like importing bait thing that you're talking about and it's all the different styles. So. People have skewed perspectives and whatever. Uh, I think to the kind of big game part that you brought up, sometimes I think like the best customers that I could have had, I lost them because they came out once and that was it. Like I went once, it didn't bite, and there was no current, and you just can't control that, you know? Um, So, but if guys come out and get them the first time, they're coming back. Yeah. And with that bluefin, if they get them the first time, they're really coming back. (laughs) That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's just cool that you've developed this. You know, we're going trophy hunting. And guys know, I mean, you're very, I I know, you're very, very upfront about it. Like, look, we're we're chart. You don't don't get trophies every trip. It just does not work like that. The point of being like a pessimist. Yeah. I am sometimes. We're probably not going to get one, but if we do... Yep. It's flash bulbs and high fives all the totally. way around. Yeah. I, I tell everyone, you know, straight up. And I talk to people beforehand and kind of, like, take their temperature, too. You know what I yeah. mean? And kind of level expectations or bring them up or whatever. That's cool. So. Well, it's the exciting stuff. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk hookup coming your way. We're going to catch check in with the Catch Report, find out what's biting up and down the beach, plus a lot more of your phone calls. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Fisherman's Landing is the top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew is always looking for ways to improve your fishing experience. We offer the finest open party trip from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. We are proud to say Fisherman's Landing is now a full-service sport fishing operation, offering half-day trips on the Dolphin, and now, for the first time in the long history of Fisherman's Landing, we have three-quarter day open party trips on the Liberty. We built the Liberty specifically to offer a better experience. Run by veteran captain Taro Takeuchi, the 85-foot Liberty is the first open party three-quarter day boat to offer bunks for your comfort. She also has huge bait capacity and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big galley and two interior heads with showers. Our open party trips from half day, three-quarter day, or one to three day trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. When it comes to tackle storage, it's got to be Flambeau. Built to fish, built to last. Check out these new products designed just for anglers. The two new HD series hard cases with thick customizable foam to protect your electronics when not in use. While the new HD series tough boxes provide heavy duty waterproof protection, clear lids and O-ring seals keep water out while letting you see in. Flambeau's patented Z-Rust provides additional protection against rust and corrosion, keeping your valuables safe. For travel, protect your rods with a tough bazooka rod carrier. Available at Turner's Outdoorsman and other fine tackle retailers. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero is very family oriented. People have brought their children down and now they're bringing their children. It's not unusual to have three generations of family at the hotel. Grandpa, dad, and uh, normally sons, sometimes daughters. 
The families come back year after year, and it's a safe place for the kids. It's small, it's intimate, right on the water, two miles of beachfront. The water's very shallow in front. There's no currents to speak of, no waves. We have child care, $10 a day for a babysitter. Security is high at Rancho Lane Narrow. It's really unnecessary, but it adds up comfort level. And we really do encourage the families. It's a great place for family reunions, family get-togethers, weddings. We do it all. 1-800-646-2252. 646-Baja. And RanchoLaneArrow.com. There's nowhere that I could think of to have the same atmosphere and the same experience that you get at Rancho Lane Arrow. We love families. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. San Diego Sports Leader, the home of ESPN Radio, the mighty 1090. Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter captains in all of Sitka, and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut like the ones we do almost every year, and salmon? Well, Sitka is famous for some of the best runs in Alaska. We also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. And listen to this, it's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except the tips. It's truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Come and join me on the Let's Talk hookup trip in June, or just go when you can. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136, or check kingfishercharters.com. Pete here. I was fortunate enough to use the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 touchscreen chart plotter and sonar unit on my boat this summer and fall. And let me say, it's truly incredible. With an easy-to-use tablet-style interface that's fresh but familiar, the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 combines a multi-touch screen with push-to-select rotary dial for precision control and speedy response. As for marking schools of tuna, yellowtail, and more, it's the best. You run over a school and there they are in full color. Color and high definition. The new NSS Evo 2 built-in sonar technology, including chirp and structure scan, can't be beat. I recently added the Simrad AP24 autopilot to my system. I've had other autopilots before, but I can tell you this one is simple, sensitive, and accurate. It integrates with my Simrad NSS Evo 2. I set a waypoint, touch the screen, and the boat steers to that spot. There's a lot more to the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 system and AP24 autopilot. That I'd like to tell you, but best, just go to your local Simrad dealer or see simrad-yachting.com for more details. The bluefin are abundant this year, but getting them the bite is another story. But if you're willing to chase them, there's an opportunity to land the catch of a lifetime. Now, getting the deal of a lifetime on a new Ford is much less effort because the gigantic summer sales event is going on now at your San Diego County Ford dealer. Choose from a great selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs and save big on interest charges with zero APR long-term financing. On top of that, your Ford dealer will give you an additional bonus for your qualified trade. This special offer is available to anyone who gets approved through Ford Motor Credit. You'll also find great deals on new Ford Super Duty, Motor Trend Magazine's 2017 Truck of the Year. So why chase deals all over town when you can land the deal of a lifetime on the new Ford, car, truck, or SUV you've always wanted during the Ford Summer Sales Event? Stop by any San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Learn more at buyfordnow.com.